that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to DWSU Stand Up. If we do not stand up for what we believe, who will? Who will? My name is Dolores Williams, and today I have the privilege of interviewing a very special lady and a woman of God. Her name is Miss Andrea Hayes, and Andrea is a member of the New Covenant Tabernacle Church of Chula Vista for 32 years. She is a liaison, liaison with Christ United for Israel with John Hagee Ministries. She's in charge of a ministry of two convalescent nursing homes. For 16 years, she is headed up Rahab's ministry for prostitutes, getting these ladies off the street. And finally, back in the 80s, she was a dynamic store manager of a store in, in Fashion Valley out in uh, San Diego. And under her management, that store ranked number one, which is no surprise. Please help me welcome Miss Andrea Hayes. Good morning, Andrea. How are you today? I am mega blessed and thank you for having me, Miss Dolores. I count it a great honor. Amen. Thank you. And how are you? I am wonderfully blessed also. <laughs> Amen. Well, you know what? We are short on time, so we're going to get right into this subject today, Andrea. And yeah. first, I wanna, we're going to talk about America, a country that we love. And Andrea, I want to ask you this. Was America founded on the Bible? Absolutely. Absolutely, Dolores. It was not only founded on the Bible, it was founded by people called pilgrims that were first called separatists that had the word of God in their heart. And when they came to America, November 11, 1620, before they even got off that boat, the Mayflower, they knew that they had been blown off course. So they were in an area that had not been chartered by King James. So what they did, they said, we've got to have rules for us Christians and non-Christians. And the only rules they knew were the ones they had governed themselves by in their Puritan church. So what they did was something unique throughout, never been done in history, was self-governance based on the laws of God and based on a self-representational government that was not through hereditary of kings or anything like that. This had never been done before. And I just want to read just from a line of the Mayflower Compact, because this is what it was called. It says, having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith, and this is the line that's important, in the presence of God. They were so God conscious, they knew that even them being blown off course had to be a sovereign act of God, the Lord. My goodness. You know, only God could have put that together. And even though man say they were blown off course, God was in control of their destiny. He is the one that controlled where they ended up. So it was no yeah. accident. What's what man deems this accident is not an accident with God because God doesn't make mistakes. He intended for them to land where they landed. And you're and, exactly right again. And the scripture that comes to mind that is the root. People say, God bless America. They don't understand why this nation is blessed. And the scripture that comes to mind is Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14. And basically the summary is, God said, if you hearken unto my word, my commandment, 
He said, I'll bless you coming in. I'll bless you coming out. He said, if your enemies come against you, he said, I'll smite them before your face and they'll flee seven different ways, which leads into the mystery and solves it of why this little ragtag group more than 150 years later won the American Revolutionary War against the superpower England because they hearkened unto the voice of the Lord. They loved God. They came to America for the sole purpose of worshiping him and propagating the gospel from this nation to all the world. You know what that does to God? God says, I honor those who honor me. So they activated the blessing of God on a nation. This is the first time in history. You know, Israel came into being because God loved Israel and he blessed it. America, the United States of America, that came into existence because a people love God. So Amen. You know what, Sister Andre? That is so true what you're saying. And I think we can take a message from that, what you just said today. Because yes. we've kind of gotten away from our founding. And yes. we know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. And so his message is the same. And, and and I know you're you're talking to the choir here, but <laughs> <laughs> we know that there was conflict between even back then they had conflict, but yet they were brought together. Yes. And this conflict they knew. And you mentioned that those people came together before they even got off of the Mayflower. That's right. They came together. That's and right. they prayed. And they formed a government. And yes. You mentioned uh, uh, William Bradford and William Brewster. Those, I was looking at that. Those were the people yeah. who drafted the Mayflower Compact. That's uh, exactly right. We're going offshore. And uh, another thing <clears throat> is we talked about, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but let, let's just go ahead and, and finish up here because we want to continue the furtherance of the gospel right. and bring back Jesus Christ, bring back God in America. Because, you know, we see all the things that are happening and riot in the streets. These yeah. people don't know God. They don't know God. That's what's absent. That's what's missing from their well, life. Well, they, they took the Bible out in 1947, just a few years after God blessed the United States to win one of the most evil dictators to ever exist in the world, Hitler in World War II. And in two years, you know, and there's many scriptures in the Bible where it says they soon forgot God. Yes. And this is an incident. Once they removed, and then in 1962, they took out prayer out of the public mm. square, out of the schools. Well, another time we can go into the wise and et cetera. But the, the devastating effects, the consequences, were now we have rioters in the street yes. who do not know God and do not understand that he still operates. He's yes. not top liver in the yes. affairs of men. Yes. And what they don't understand that God said, to Jeremiah when he was a young little prophet. He said, see, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. In other words, God is saying, if you don't, because Deuteronomy uh, 28 doesn't end with verse 14. In, in verse 15, it goes into the curse of oh, what yeah. happens when nations and governments violate the biblical principles of God. Yes, you know and what, Andrea? The curse yes. is what will come on a nation. Yes. So when you have rioters that have no biblical foundation, then they don't understand 
when things go wrong and why? Because they've taken almighty God out. A yes. nation that turns its back on God yes. is in deep trouble. You, you are so right. Now, I think what you just said, and we want this message to get out, we've got to turn back to God. If yes. That's how we survive. That's how this nation survives, is by getting back to God, getting back to our roots. Because That's without right. him, we cannot survive. Amen. We'll make it by the grace of God. But mm -hmm. we can continue to turn our back on God and remove him from everything that he's blessed us with because he has blessed this country immensely. He has totally blessed God, uh, this nation. And I don't ever want to take it for granted that our blessings come from God. Um, now, let's go ahead and talk about, the Andrea, I want to talk about the dangers of not teaching the truth about the Amer American history. Now, I heard something yesterday that was very disturbing to me. I spoke to a teacher a couple of days ago and she told me that she's been forced to teach a curriculum on Black Lives Matter, the group. Oh, wow. She's been forced. They have no, no opportunity to back out. They have to teach this curriculum. And we know that all lives matter. Let's, let's just be clear about that. Every life exactly. matters to God. Exactly. Whether you black, it doesn't matter what your color is. But when we we're, we're talking about so much about black lives matter, yes, every one of them matters from the womb all the way through. Every life matters to God because He is the one that created every life. Now, but when we're when teachers are forced not to teach our American history, and when they are when they are forced to teach lies and deceit from a group that is a Marxist, super trained Marxist, and I'm not, and we've, I've said this before on our recordings, they are super trained Marxists. I didn't make that up. They Those said the it themselves in their own bio. That's we are right. super trained and they say that they are going to overthrow the United States. That That's is right. what they said. Now, when this curriculum, along with the 1619 uh, project, both of these are lies, based on lies, based on when this country started, and then they're not telling the truth. But this is what our students will be forced to learn. And, and don't get me started about the universities, what they are teaching. I was listening oh, to uh, another, oh, just, you know, it was, I just would listen to an interview yesterday, Washington and Lee University in Virginia, both of these schools have a curriculum now, these parents are paying $74,000 a year for their young people to attend these colleges, fill their heads with a bunch of nonsense, but they are teaching a course on how they can overthrow the state. They're teaching a course on that. And That's our parents crazy. are paying thousands of dollars for our That's children crazy. to go to college to have their minds warped. Yes. Now, yeah. So now, with all of that in mind, we go back into history. By the time of the American Revolutionary War, about 40 years before, you're now into the second generation of Puritans. And what they notice is that many of them had strayed and started watering down the knowledge of the Bible. But God had rams in the bush. He had two major awakenings or revival. The first one was a pastor who was Puritan named Jonathan Edwards. The second one was an English evangelist who came over by the name of George Whitfield. And what they noticed when they got to the colony, George Whitfield, they recognized that one very few were getting born again. Oh, they were attending church. They were doing religious things. Sound familiar for today? So what happened, they were losing that salt and light and being that city on a hill. Not only that, you had so many Christians from different denominations that fled Europe, like Baptists that 
were in Rhode Island. The Quakers were in Pennsylvania. The Huguenots were in New York that were from France. So they started fighting. The devil got in there and had division between this denomination and this state and that until God raised up Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield. They started preaching that you must be born again. And George Whitfield coined the phrase that we now use in our Pledge of Allegiance. He said, one nation under God, but it only would be united to successfully win the war of the American Revolution if they had a higher identity. And that was being born again in their hearts and seeing themselves as George Whitfield preached. He said, Father Abraham, are there any Catholics in heaven? Father, this is in his preaching. He said that Father Abraham said, no, don't know about that. Father Abraham, are there any Huguenots up there? Uh, no, don't, never heard of that either. He said, Father Abraham, are there any Baptists up there? He said, all we have up here are those that have accepted Jesus in their heart as their savior. That powerful message changed the whole ideology it changed their whole, renewed their mind to what it was to be a Christian, which transcend, yeah. watch this, denomination, gender, and race. Therefore, when they declared their independence, they now had a higher identity in God as being born again, one nation of Christians under God. And that's what we need today, Ms. Dolores, you, is that we're not black Christians, we're not white, we're not this, we're not that. When you are born again from your heart and have accepted Jesus as Lord, as it says in Acts 17, Apostle Paul is preaching on Mars Hill, he said, we are all of one blood, and that is a higher identity. And when we realize and come back to cracking open our Bibles, it's starting in the church, so we can be the salt and light, so we can be the city on the hill. When they see us united and see that as Blacks, God loves us as much as he loves every other race that has accepted his son as savior. We're not victims. No. We're children blessed of God. And Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14 kicks in. We'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. We'll be, the womb of our body will be blessed instead of killing it, etc. Our families will be blessed. Andrea, you just said a word now. You just preached a sermon, okay? <laughs> you just told the truth and that's what's missing in our schools that's what's missing in our society yeah. is knowledge of god you know we were talking yesterday about george whitfield i when i heard about that man how he had a booming voice george whitfield that man now this way 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 long time ago they did not have microphones but that man's voice carried for miles they had like what 30,000 people That's correct. this yeah. man could, could speak for one a, a mile away you had 30,000 people gathered George Whitfield preached the gospel and can you imagine a mile away 30,000 people listen to this man and they could hear every word that he said that yeah. he didn't need a microphone. He spoke for God. That was God's voice speaking. And you know, Andre, God's voice is speaking to America today. It is speaking yeah. to us today. That's why we're on here talking and sharing this video because we have to say, we say one nation under God. We don't leave under God out at no That's time right. because a nation without God, as you say, is a nation that is going under. 
and we are fighting for the soul of America, for God to be put back in our schools, back in our society. And when we do that, we will see a change in this country. We will not see rioting in the streets. We That's will right. not see division in politics. But there has to be a will in the, in the minds and the hearts of those who lead us. And if they don't have a mind to do what's right and to do what's evil, then that's the result that we're going to get. We will get what we get. And what we're getting right now is not edifying to God. It's not glorifying him at all. In As the Mayflower Compact said, that yes. this nation would be to the glory of God. So what did what was the secret of those two awakenings? The secret is that there just needs to be a remnant, yes. just like Daniel by himself stood in the gap for Israel when they were exiled in Babylon. It just takes just a handful of Christians who are born again and they said that uh, George Whitfield and, and, and Jonathan Edwards, they knew each other. Jonathan Edwards, before that famous sermon he preached of sinners in the hand of an angry God, he had prayed 16 hours. It's got to start with a season of fervent prayer of us at the church. We can't put this on President Trump. We can't put this on politicians. If they're not saved, they're lost as a goose in the blizzard. They can't do it. It is going to come from the church. And that's why it looks like, God, well, why don't you intervene? I hear people saying that. He gave the power to the church. We are to pray in Jesus' name. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Yes. Yes, that, he did. That, that is so thing. true. That is, you know what? We can take that to the bank, Andrea. We can bank our lives on that because God is faithful. Yes, he, he is. What he say? He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And you're talking about a remnant? Yes, there is a few, but God doesn't need a lot of people. No, he doesn't. Look at Gideon. He doesn't that, need a that, lot of people. Look at David. Go. He doesn't need a lot of people. No. He just needs people who are faithful. That's right. People that love him, people that will stand on his word. That's right. It's, it's that has, and, what, and what the whole hallmark throughout the American Revolution, and this is why they're rewriting history, putting in the, and it's all the devil. You know, it's really not about Democrats and Republicans and globalism and, you know, nationalism and socialism and, you know, and democracy. It's really about, this is a battle for the souls of this nation of good versus evil. And the devil is behind that. Now, I know there's even sad to say some Christians who don't believe in the devil. And it's because they need to crack open their Bible. Jesus talked more about the devil than almost anything else because he came to expose him. Yes. And what they have to understand is that as Christians, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with these demonic thinking patterns. And it is our job to pray them out. But we can only do it one way. And that is, according to 2 Corinthians, second chapter, fifth verse, that our faith stand not in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. That's what George Whitfield had. That's why his voice could uh, carry a mile away. He was in the supernatural power of God. That's where his faith was. That was the faith of the pilgrims when they came. That's what drove them. That's what's needed today is faith that when we pray, like you said, it just takes a few. 
that when we pray, we believe that God, with his supernatural power, the same supernatural power that 13 little ragtag col uh, states, colonies, be a superpower with. You know the British were scratching their head. How did they do this? They did it through Almighty God. Yes, it had to be God because it I mean had you had be it had to be God. Only only God could have brought down that that system of governing. He That's took right. those people from some mighty people that had a lot of power. That's they right. They had people power, but That's they right. didn't have God power. That preacher, that's exactly right. And pe and see, the number one uh, issue that the church faces today, Sister Dolores, is this, the spirit of fear. And the only thing that can combat the spirit of fear off the church is faith in God. And it, it starts with the law <laughs> rededicating their lives and hearts and those that aren't born again and there's some pastors I suspect just like back then that are not born again. Only when you're born again can you have a communication and personal relationship with God and then when you pray God, you know, we don't do all the talking. We let him, he's the wisdom. He, he knows exactly how to stop every riot BLM, you know, God has told me to pray for them. And he's even told me that some of them come from, you know, Christian type homes. But because of the ignorance, it says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So our prayer not only is to resolve this mess, but it is to get that Bible back in school, the word of God and his principles back in school. And the one last thing I want to say is that history, because you were talking about this fake history of the 1619 project, the key thing, it's of the devil, it's a tool of the devil to further tear down this and, and to cancel you know, our history, but it's not going to work because we're praying and greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. God sees everything the devil's doing. He knows the end from the beginning. He's not surprised by any of this. He just needs his church to unite because a house divided against itself can't stand, but unite and submit and listen to him. He's got the wisdom out of it. We know second Chronicles, 714. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn, that's the issue. The issue really isn't the loss. The issue is the church. And as the church falls in love again with its Savior and Lord, this will literally look like, and this may sound kind of out there, this will literally look like a storm in a teacup. But back during the time of our founders, they had what they called providential history. History was not taught just a bunch of facts like they have now. That's why the, the children find it so boring. It was taught as everything that has happened has happened as a sovereign act of God. They connected history from the beginning of time with that Bible. That Bible was in that classroom. So as you went through history, you could see and the students were taught that God operates in the affairs of man. And what they do as a nation and how they vote affects their future. And Andrea. that's it. You, That's the way history was taught. Andrea, you just given us a history lesson today, and I am so thankful that you came and shared and just poured your heart, and we are in total agreement. Yes. We have to get back to God. 
we have to get back to our founding. Our foundation is the Bible. Yes. And, you know, but it would, it takes some brave people, you know, to wave these waters and to get back to where we need to be. And to part the only God, only God can come in and do that. No man can do it. Only God. Amen. That's yes. right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, on that note, Andrea, yeah. thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate the time that you took. It has been wonderful. And I want to go ahead and, and I'm going to thank my audience, but I'm going to ask you to come back and close us with prayer. But to my audience you. and to those who are listening to this, to this message, to this sermon, I want to thank you for joining in. I want to thank you for listening. I'm serious. When we come each week, we try to bring you a subject that's true. We're not bringing, we don't want to be controversial, but there are some things we have to talk about. We can't right. see things under the rug and pretend that they don't exist. You know, because God is real. He's watching. He's seeing, observing everything. He has an expectation for those of us who are called by his name. He has expectation for us to act and to speak out on his behalf. So we are his eyes, his ears, his feet. We are the ones who carry his message today. And that's very serious. And Andrea, let me go ahead and say thank you again. Thanks to my audience. And don't forget, come back next week. We'll have another guest. You can contact me at dwsview at gmail.com. Uh, and hit that red button and subscribe to my channel. Subscribe. And also, if you, <laughs> I also will take a sponsor. If you want to sponsor this show, I will take that as well. And I welcome you if you want to sponsor my show. And anyway, we're, we're going to close right now with prayer. Andre, I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer. And we, to God be the glory. Go ahead and close us in prayer. Yes, thank you for having me. Yes, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that this message will go out, Father God, in the spirit of truth, and that our words will be like barbed arrows, documenting on the hearts and minds of the audience, Father God, that you send those hungry souls that have been in the valley of decision, or those Christians that have walked in that spirit of fear, and that they heard the word of God, and that faith has now come. And Father God, I thank you that according to Second Chronicles 16, 9, it says that your eyes, that they go to and fro throughout the earth to show yourself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards you. I thank you, Father, that you are raising up prayers, intercessors, prayer warriors that are praying fervent prayers for this coming election and for the people of this nation who are in confusion, who don't know, who are in the valley of decision, and that because of those prayers, you are showing yourself strong and that our end, our latter end, will be greater than our former. And our trust is only in you and in your son, Jesus. He's not only our personal savior, but he is the savior and Lord of the United States of America. And in your name, Jesus, we pray it all. Amen. Amen.